Ladies and gentlemen, I'm happy to introduce to you again Stuart Dutton, a man who has gone through a lot of mysteries and a lot of healing. And he has experienced a lot of characters in his life. It was Robert Trunks, who can set up my 2000, spent huge fortunes in creating a record label recording. All the great artists of South Africa, Medalla and Bussi and Moses, etc. Huge Canada. So I thought, you know, as a music journalist, I should write a book about Robin. But he said to me, well, actually, he's got this guy, Amanda, who's kind of healed him and molded him into this person. He's a very unusual character. So Robert said, now I must write a book about Amanda. So I got to know Amanda. And then Amanda got to know my story, as you mentioned, the near-death experience, etc. So Amanda was, well, actually, you need to write a book about yourself because the kind of the book I say wrote itself. The stories all came together and locked in. The story specifically about Moses and the was was devastating and life changing too. Us at the time because he was right at the forefront of our music in South Africa. And suddenly he was gone and it was very mysterious. Moses was the character, if he'd lived onwards, yeah. could have created something painful yeah. for the whole world mm. to really get into this finding yourself, finding oneself, genes and spirits, understanding the greater concepts of reality, the philosophy, you know. The, and really expressing yourself in multiple ways, you know, because he says, you know, you can be a musician, you can be a myriad of things. I actually asked Ananda how Moses had been killed. Ananda said, I'll show you. Then Ananda himself was eventually murdered. And there were three or four things that led to his death. One of which was jealousy in the music industry for his success, which could have resulted in murder. And then another one was um, drug use. I think another difficult thing with Moses was that him and his wife actually worked together. So the husband and wife working thing did create inordinate pressures. And probably finally was some support in the South African music industry. How are you? What's that? That? That is the sky, the sun, the moon, the clouds, the birds, the flowers, the snail, all trees, the beauty of life. It's God. It's love. It's love. <laughs> I remember it was like this, he was a child, and I think with all the musicians coming there, with all these terrible, stressful things that happen in the music industry, such as we eventually begin to learn. He was able to bring some light and also he'd been through the life struggle of mm. earth and having been in prison, gone through all of that. So he knew that what path is not to try and work with God. So I think he had, a, he had an effect on galvanizing the musical spirit. And under the name itself was the disciple of the Buddha. Mm. So if you go back in history, so I wonder, and then he himself, he served under the Hugging Amma in India. He's a famous healer, compassionate healer. And he also served under Osho, who's a kind of a Zen Buddhist healer. And then I believe he was in Mexico where he learned to do mescalito healing, which is healing with that, um, you know, psychedelic drug. <laughs> Maybe the philosophy is to find the peace within. So, Alapea Sutea for me means finding the peace within, to the peace on earth. Maybe earth is, you know, understanding of, of something that is within as well. It says, if I can help one person stop killing, I've done my job. So, if I can help one person to not kill themselves, I've done my job. All we want to give the tools to, to the young writers to take these rich stories, the young musicians to take this inspiration. And go forward.
Ulum sebenzi Wawenza yona labo bambise nenabo Wububu isi Afrika isi yonke Nishanganisi 